Now we're going to try our hand at tying some dry flies. In particular, this fly is going to be an elk hair caddis. And the concepts that we're going to illustrate here are, uh, one is how to stack hair, and two, we're going to illustrate how to apply dry fly hackle onto a fly. And we're going to try to point out some other differences between the materials used for dry flies as opposed to wet flies, which if you've been following the segments in order, up to this point we've tied all wet flies. This is our first dry fly. Um, now a dry fly is supposed to sit on top of the water as opposed to the wet flies, which are subsurface flies. They're supposed to be fished underneath the surface of the water. So we've got our hook in the vise, and we're going to make our thread base. We're going to attach our thread to the hook. And we're going to make just a few wraps, just enough to attach our thread here. Clip off the tag end. And then we're going to take a piece of gold wire and we're going to attach this to the hook. So again, we hold it on a, about a 45 degree angle underneath the hook. Trap it up with our thread, maybe two or three wraps. Pull it back along the shank until the wire sinks underneath the thread wraps that you've made. And now you're going to use that wire to help you finish establishing your thread base as well as binding the wire securely to the bottom of the hook. Okay, and you wrap all the way back to the bend. So now we've got our wire attached to the hook and we've got our thread base has been created. Now we're going to attach a hackle and we're going to use this ginger hackle here. Now you'll notice the difference the hackle that we've used up to this point has been very uh, uh, big, uh, bigger of a feather, a little bit bigger of a feather um, with some web in it. This is a very skinny feather. Okay, it comes from a different part of the bird. And if we kind of flex it, you'll see it has a very high barb count. And the barbs are a little bit on the stiffer side as opposed to the softer barbs that we used with the wet fly hackle. So that points out some of the differences between the, uh, the, the wet fly hackle and the dry fly hackle. We're going to use the hackle to help float the fly. So we want a feather that has a stiffer barb to it um, and more of the barbs to help support the fly on top of the water. Now we're going to come in and we're going to actually stroke back and strip away about the bottom third of the feather here. So stroke your barbs back until they stick out more or less perpendicular and then you're going to come in with your fingers and you're just going to grab those barbs and just peel them right out of the way. Now a general rule of thumb is when you tie in a wet fly hackle, you tie it in by the tip of the feather. With dry fly hackle, we're going to tie it in by the butt of the feather. So what we're doing here is exposing the quill of the feather and we're going to tie the feather in by the quill. And you want to tie it in not right at the point where the barbs attach to it, but a little bit towards the butt end of it. You want to leave a little bit of quill exposed at the end so that when you start to wrap your feather, the barbs will orient themselves and stick out more perpendicular to the hook. That won't happen if you tie it in too close to where the barbs are. So we're going to hold that on an angle and you can loose wrap it in and then give some more securing wraps or if that's difficult you can always pinch wrap it into place okay but if you look you can see here we've got just a little bit of quill exposed behind the tie-in point and that's what we want so let's secure this quill up the length of the hook uh, we're also going to stop it right about there we're going to leave maybe an eye and a half or two eyes widths of space at the front of the hook to allow us some space to tie in our wing. So let's clip off the butt end here. A couple more wraps just to secure that last little bit in. Now we're going to bring our thread back to about the midpoint, maybe back a little bit further, and we're going to dub a body on this fly. We're going to use tan dubbing, and we're going to do it in the same way that we did the hairs ear nymph, but I don't know if it reads on the camera very well, but if you compare this dubbing to the dubbing that we used for the hairs ear nymph, this is a much finer dubbing as opposed to the very coarse hair's ear nymph that we had. And uh, you want this, the reason for that is that it's going to pack a little bit tighter, it's a little more buoyant, again it's going to support the fly on the surface of the, of the water a little bit better. It's not going to absorb a lot of water, it's not going to sink. But you prepare it in the same way. You pull it apart, fold it back on itself to get these little wisps sticking out here. And then you're just going to pinch a little bit of those off 
hold your thread out kind of taut and you're going to spin that dubbing onto the thread the same way that we did with the hare's ear nymph now you might find with the dry fly dubbing that it's it it doesn't stick to the thread quite as much as you'd like there's a couple of things that you can do to offset that um, you can apply a little bit of wax to the thread if you just get a tube of chapstick and run it along the thread the wax will be a little bit sticky and it'll help the uh, the dubbing to attach a little bit better um, you can also just dampen your fingers um, I'm off camera when I do this but I'll occasionally just lick my fingers and just take my dubbing then and pinch it on and uh, that'll help to secure it on there as well or you could get a little sponge and just tap your finger on the sponge same difference now again our threads a little bit forward so that we when we start to uh, to dub we can back wrap a little bit onto the fly and try to time it so that our dubbing starts to deploy right where we run it right at the bend of the hook there and you're going to wrap it in touching turns up the shank again to a point right about here for this fly we don't want to dub too much more forward than there because we're going to need some space to attach our wings so I have just a little bit extra dubbing here I'll just pinch some of it off and that looks pretty good right there Okay, so we've got our dub body. Get some of these stray guys off of here. Let's tweak them right out. And now we're going to wrap our hackle. We're going to wrap this in spiral turns. It's a palmered hackle. And you can see now, because I left that little piece of quill exposed, as I pull this feather up and start to wrap it, as I bring it down, you see that feather lines up perpendicular in this plane, the barbs are in this plane perpendicular to the hook shank so that as I continue to wrap here now you'll see that they're going to stick straight out from the body and that's what we're looking for so you wrap in palmer in spiral turns, it's a palmered hackle which means in spiral, tur spiral turns up to the body the end of the body hold your hackle forward, cross it with your thread and make a couple more wraps in here to secure that down and we're going to come in then and trim this butt end out of the way this excess get that off of there okay very good now I want you to take your scissors and you're going to come in along the top of the fly and you're actually going to trim the barbs off of the top of this fly trim those hackle barbs away so you're going to have hackle underneath the fly and on top of the fly it's trimmed off pretty pretty flush now to apply your rib you're going to counter wrap your rib which means wrapping toward yourself as opposed to away from yourself and the idea is to, to counter wrap this to have it cross your feather your feather quill to secure that feather down just a little bit tighter but you don't want to trap any of these barbs underneath here in the process you want to leave those as un, as free as possible so bring your wire underneath as you come over the top of the fly that's where you cross your quill at and that's part of the reason why you trim those barbs off so that you can trap that quill down without trapping barbs as you wrap through the rest of the hackle barbs if you wiggle this wire back and forth you'll get it through those barbs without compressing too many of them cross on the top, wiggle your wire back and forth to help it ease through those barbs on the bottom and you repeat that process right up to the uh, to the front of the body here and you see we did pretty good there, we didn't trap too many hackle barbs underneath the bottom of the hook once you get to the front of the body you're going to cross your thread over secure your wire down make a couple more wraps just to secure it in place you can bring this up toward the eye a little bit and then back to keep a nice flat even base on which to set your wing and let me untwist my wire here and then you can either snip or just work your wire a little bit and it'll ping right out of the way So our fly is ribbed and our hackle is in place and now we're going to apply a hair wing to this fly. Now we're going to use uh, 
we're going to use elk here, bleached elk here. This is a little patch of it, and you'll see it's pretty heavily used here. I've used most of it, but I still have some viable fibers here to use. You're going to come in and pinch off a fair amount of it. Okay, stroke it up. You want to get a good amount, I would say. Depends on the size of your fly, but for the size that we're doing here, that looks that looks about right. Snip off a bit more than you need, because as you uh, as you comb this out, it's going to thin out a little bit. So lift up your fibers, come in, snip off the bunch with your scissors, and just kind of gather everything up here. Okay, pinch it together by the tips, and you'll see that there's some fuzz that's sticking out. Hair that you cut off of a skin like this will have under fur embedded in the bases of the fibers. You want to get those out of the way. So you take a small comb and you just come in and you just comb that out of the way. Usually if you just kind of beat it a little bit with your comb, it takes that shag right out of it or at least loosens it up so that you can then come in and stroke with your fingers and clean that up. And now you'll see that we've got a stack of hair with very little under fur in the bottom here. Okay, you want to remove that underfur because when we go to stack these fibers, which is what we're going to do now, if that underfur is in there, it's going to kind of bind them together and won't let them stack effectively. Okay, so now let me grab my hair stacker, which is this little tube with a cup at the end of it. It's a little cylinder and it's got a cup at the end. You put those together, you insert your fibers into the tube tips first, drop them in there. And then you want to just tap this. You can tap it on the tabletop. I'm going to tap it on my knuckle here so you can kind of see the action. Okay. Tap them down. Tip your stacker to the side. And when you remove the cup, you'll see we've got ends that are pretty well lined up there. Grab the ends and pull the bunch out. And we did pretty good. We're pretty well stacked. And now Let's get this little bit of under fur out of here. Now we're going to tie this bunch onto the top of the hook. We're going to measure it up for length. You want it to extend to the bend of the hook, but not too much beyond. So that sizing, that spacing looks pretty good. I'm going to switch hands to secure it in place. And I would suggest making three loose wraps here. One, two, three. Stroke your butt ends up to keep everything on top of the hook. Roll your fingers forward and give a little tug with your thread. And do that a couple of times over. One, two, three, and tug. One, two, three, and tug. And again, one, two, three, four, and tug. So you're going to get about 12 to, 12 to 15 wraps in there. You want to repeat that process enough so that that bunch is secured onto the hook. I'm going to let go. we got one stray guy here. Let's get him out of there. And our wing stayed pretty good. It's on top of the hook. The length looks good. So I'm happy with that. Now, keeping some tension on your thread, lift the butt ends up and make a few wraps right in front of the bases of those fibers. Okay? And at this point, you're going to whip finish. You're going to come in here and hold these butt ends up again and you're going to make your whip finish right in front of those fibers. Three, four, five, six. Come in and lance your thread off. Now gather these butt ends up. Hold them forward a little bit and you're going to trim them nice and tight. Got one little guy in there. Trim them nice and tight on a bit of an angle. And that forms the head of your fly. Stroke those up. Apply a little bit of glue at your whip finish point and also apply a little bit of glue over top of the thread that's securing your wing in place. And that'll stabilize all that. And there you have a very nice looking elk hair caddis.